As they say, the road to revolution is paved with the blood of many. Hello everyone and welcome to Revolutionary Games Utena, the competition to see who is going to bring the world revolution. As you well know, only one person can bring the revolution, and it is only upon standing on the corpses of their fallen comrades do they have any hope of bringing meaningful change to the world. With that said, our macabre activities today begin with these 12 districts. I, I don't know Hunger Games lore, so if this these these allocations mean something, if it means something that what district every character is in, um, that was totally intentional. It's actually very well planned. But I did, however, link characters based on, you know, who seems to be connected, have a close relationship, or um, an unclose, very toxic relationship. In either case, District 1, everyone's favorite sapphic coupling of Utsuna and Anthe obviously have to be together. District 2, the Kaoru siblings. District 3, Juri and Shiori. District 4, we've got the BFFs of Wakaba and Choo Choo. District 5, Sionji and Toga. District 6, Nanami and Mitsuru. District 7, Ruka and Tetsuya the Onion Prince. I figured I would put the two would-be prince figures who have their one or two episodes together. District 8, Keiko and Tokiko. I already put Nanami and Toga with someone, so Keiko gets Tokiko. District 9, Mrs. Otori, and I, I don't know if she has a name, so I just went with Angry Conservative Teacher, but it's it's the teacher. It's not Utsuna related. The picture is just the picture. And then District 10, I separated Eiko and Biko, but they are together for now. We'll see how far those alliances lean. District 11, Nemuro and Mamiya, and if you're wondering how Anthe and Mamiya can both exist simultaneously, um, it's magic. That's how. District 12 is Akio and Kanae. I thought about separating Akio and Dios, but I figured, nah, they, they could just be one person for this. So these are our, if I can count, 24 tributes. And if I were guessing based on just the just the anime, who has the best chance here? I, I feel like Anthe, you know, she uses her magic to get her ways here, and she uses her abilities to her fullest extent. She's got a pretty good chance. It's in a, I think, by the grace of Anthe, has a chance. Jury, obviously, as a as a fencer, uh, Kozue is a wild animal after all, so she might have a shot. Sayonji, I think, would die, but maybe Toga has a chance. Uh, Choo Choo is, I think, a wild card. Choo Choo is definitely one to watch out for, one that you would not want to run into in an actual Hunger Games situation. And then of the remaining here, there's a lot of unknowns happening with District 7, 8, and 9. I don't know the full power levels and extents of these characters. I think, I think there's some, some real chaotic energy happening here. And then, of course, we've got Akio as all-powerful, uh, or potentially, maybe hopefully, the first to go. If you're wanting to play along with us, this is the perfect time to guess who is going to win. Use your best logic and go in knowing full well that this situation, this setup that I used, does not take into account any factors of their personalities or abilities. It is completely and totally random. With that being said, we'll go ahead and proceed. As the tributes stand on their podiums, the horn sounds. Tetsuya, the Onion Prince, runs away from the cornucopia. Sayonji finds a bag full of explosives. Mrs. Otori runs away from the cornucopia. Mitsuru grabs a backpack and retreats. I can visualize that. I, I, can, I can see him being very resourceful in the moment and grabbing something before he gets out of dodge. Tokiko takes a sickle from inside the cornucopia. Oh, I, I guess uh, Tokiko's a little bit of Angel of Death vibes currently. Or maybe she's just going to do some agriculture. That's what sickles are for, I think when they're not being grimly reaping. Akio runs away from the cornucopia. Utsuna runs away from the cornucopia. Wakaba also running. Angry conservative teacher is joining the fray. Jury running away as well. I'm surprised. I thought Jury for sure would have grabbed something before she left. I'm a little bit surprised there. Did we see Shiori already go anywhere? We haven't seen Shiori. I was going to say maybe she's keeping an eye on Shiori. Kozue finds a canteen full of water. Okay, I, I could see I could see a little bit of like water attributes with the Kozue siblings, not just because of the blue hair, uh, but mostly because of the blue hair. Eiko takes a sickle. Oh no. Anthe runs away from the cornucopia. Toga takes a handful of throwing knives. That is actually in character. Because there was that moment where he was throwing the knives at Mickey during the council meeting. Perfect. That's very, very good. Oh, we got a set of four here. 
Keiko and Nemero fight Ruka and Biko. Ruka and Biko survive. Oh no. So that means that we've already lost Keiko and Nemero. Oh no. Keiko, if you were a big Keiko fan, I am sorry. I am sorry for your loss. I know that Keiko is a fan favorite. You know, her episode is universally acclaimed as the best episode of all of Utsuna and obviously of the Black Rose Duelist. And unfortunately, she is forever relegated to being a vermin. Um, that has been squashed. That has been thoroughly squashed. Nemero, what a what a shining bright light, a shining star, snuffed out too early. You know, I would have thought that he would have hung to the shadows and would have kept quieter for longer instead of lashing out. But I think it was to his folly to underestimate uh, Ruka and Biko here. Ruka is, after all, like a fencing captain. And Biko, she... Um, has things that she does in the shadow plays that could be very dangerous, I'm sure. Mickey runs away from the cornucopia. Shiori runs from the cornucopia. Kane rips a mace out of Nanami's hands. Ooh, that's really spicy. I, I could see it. Kane, you know, she's sick of being fork-fed apples, you know, all the time. And I think that this is her moment to, to seize the power for herself. And Nanami, while she will go for the weapon, she has a violent tendency. I, I think she's also clumsy. I think she could easily misplace it or just simply not have a tight enough grip, you know, not have her head in the game, so to speak. Mamma Mia, Mamma Mia, <laughs> Mamma Mia runs away from the cornucopia and Choo Choo gathers as much food as he can. Now, is that strategy or is that just Choo Choo eating a lot? Because that also would be in character for Choo Choo just to be stuffing his face as much as he can before the actual killing begins. Let's go ahead and proceed. Toga and Sayonji fight angry conservative teacher and Kane. Angry conservative teacher and Kane survive. That's an upset. So how did this play out? So obviously Toga and Sayonji are, you know, great duelists, great fencers. Um, for Sayonji, we maybe have more of the kendo stylings coming in. And with those two together, I, I don't know how they could have lost to the teacher. I mean, we never see the teacher fight in Revolutionary Girl Utsuna. So maybe the teacher is a lot more capable than we first realized. You know, maybe she's going easy on Utsuna by just chastising her and yelling at her. But if she would have been provoked, angry conservative teacher could have laid the smack down. I, I think it's like that old school style of teacher where they have the ruler. Maybe she, like, grabbed one of those rulers and just disciplined to death the, uh, the Toka and Sayoji duo. Kane, Kane is getting suspicious here because she had that mace. And I'm, I'm wondering maybe the reason why she lost her Black Rose duel is because that she only had a sword. Toga and Sayonji already out of the Hunger Games. Mamiya begs for Eiko to kill him. She refuses keeping Mamiya alive. Wow, I guess seeing Nemero being taken out so early really did take a toll on Mamiya here. And I guess he didn't see a path forward. But Eiko, um, she's sewing a more merciful side. It was Biko that did the fighting earlier. So maybe, you know, maybe they got a little bit of a play going on here where Biko is more of the murderous one and Eiko is more of the pacifist. At least for the moment that's going on. They could always switch perspectives later. But Mamiya lives on, although it seems like his spirit may be broken. Got something going down over here with Mitsuru and Anthe. Mitsuru catches Anthe off guard and kills her. Wow, okay, so this does look like the face of an elementary school boy who just got done killing someone. And this does look like the face of someone who was off guard and may have gotten killed. But outside of the pictures and the text, I wouldn't have believed this. Anthe was for sure like a shoe in for like the last, at least last third of people, right? Like the final four or five or six. I don't know math, so I don't know what a third of 24 is off the top of my head, but I'm sure she would have been there. But Mitsuru, I guess something in that backpack must have been able to, to blindside. Or maybe Anthe, sharing the will of Mamiya here, is also uh, feeling that disheartened element. Maybe the reason why she's off guard is she just got done switching back and forth to Mamiya, and she's still trying to figure out who she is and where she is and how she is and why she is. I, I don't know how this could have happened, but this is very alarming to say the least and obviously a game shaker. What an incredible early round here. Choo Choo receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. Who would support this rodent and or primate? Who would do such a thing? I would not want to give Choo Choo anything. Although it does look like based on the picture, the water may have come from the leaf that he is holding. So maybe someone thought it'd be funny and give him a leaf and like, haha, I'm going to help you. I'm donating one leaf, but tricks on them the leaf contained a vital vital nutrient known as h2o 
Akio injures himself. Now, was this an accident? Is it clumsiness? Or is this part of his grand scheme? Is Akio going to try to take this injury and seek pity out of other people? Only to let their guard down. You know, he's going he's gonna to make them think that he's hurt. He's going to make them think that he's down in his luck. And then he's going to give them a, a swift uppercut or a swift stab stab in the stomach or something. I never know with Akio. Or it could just be clumsiness. It's hard to say. Biko and Nanami split up to search for resources. Interesting. So they're not even part of the same district. You know, Eiko and Biko are supposed to be together. And Nanami is supposed to be with Mitsuru. So there might be some, some weird alliances already forming here. Tetsuya, the Onion Prince, travels to higher ground. He's going for the Obi-Wan Kenobi strategy. Maybe, again, with this expression here, just looking over the, the surrounding chaos, trying to figure out what someone like himself is going to do, seeing that he doesn't have a, an especially strong talent or especially strong experience in all of these things. He is not a trained fighter like many of these people are. He might just be trying to play it safe, which seems like the right strategy for Tatsuya at this stage of the game. Uh, unless he has a weapon we don't know about, uh, we do have someone wielding a mace out there and whatever was in Mitsuru's bag. And we got bombs. I think Sionji had bombs? So... Just, you know, you got to be careful. Mickey discovers a river. Again, water connections. It's not just the blue hair. There is something definitely there. Even though now that I'm thinking about it, Juri has more water connections. Arasugawa and then the locket in the river. Yeah, the drowning. Yeah, that would be more That'd be more Juri's thing, but we're going to stick with our guns here. Mickey definitely found a river. Shiori searches for firewood. It doesn't look like she found it based on her look here. Mrs. Otori goes hunting. Hunting for animals or hunting for people? Hmm. Hmm. Or hunting for Akio? Hmm. Ruka sets an explosive off. Oh my god. Killing Utsuna, Kozue, Jury, and Wakaba. So, I swear this is randomized. I This is my first time doing this run. Uh, I haven't tweaked anything. I don't think there's supposed to be this amount of death early on. I got this idea from watching a Kingdom Hearts YouTuber named Regular Pat, and he did this for Kingdom Hearts, and I don't remember there being this much death in the very beginning of day one. And not only is it a lot of death, but we're killing off, like, main characters. <laughs> so, Ruka has managed to kill Utsuna, Juri, Wakaba, and Kozue. Which, if I'm thinking of the partnerships here, both Utsuna and Anthea are dead. Mickey's still alive for Kozue, so Mickey can carry on the vengeance of his sister's will. Shiori is still alive. I don't know what the death of Juri would do to Shiori's psyche. I, I suppose it would unhinge it further because she has no one to fixate upon in that same way. And then Choo Choo is carrying on the will of Wakaba, although to what extent Choo Choo even knew that he was partnered with Wakaba, I think is dubious at best. Wow. Tokiko dies from hunger. And eh, not a big loss. Proceed! So, looking at uh, our summary here, 10 cannon shots can be heard in the distance. Keiko, unable to escape being vermin. She's been cast aside, living in the shadows of her betters. But, to be fair, most of those other people she idolizes died shortly after, considering that she did lose Toga also. So she, she maybe got lucky by dying before she had to see Toga die. Nemero from District 11, gone way too soon, should have kept more of the shadows, should have played more of the long con, but unfortunately, he got caught up in the fray and died way too soon. Toga and Sionji, District 5, completely wiped out in one fight. Really hate to see it. Really hate to see it. Anthe and Utsuna, probably the biggest upset <laughs> for anyone watching this, I feel like this premise is is fun, but I feel like I'm going to anger people inadvertently, not trying to do anything, by killing off the main two characters in, in day one. That wasn't me. That wasn't me. That was the will of fate. That was the destiny, guys. This was the absolute destiny apocalypse. And apocalypse very literally, because ten of these people are dead now. Kozue and Jury leaving behind someone to carry on their will, uh, further potentially driving their uh, sibling and or love interest and or toxic relationship further into the brink. And I, I think what they're going to be doing next is anyone's guess. I, I'm, I'm pulling for Mickey and for Shiori to come back with a vengeance and to really seek out that bloodlust, which I'm sure is very healthy for both of them to do. Wakaba and Tokiko 
also lost. Uh, I, I honestly, I would have rooted for Wakaba if I, if I could pick anyone to win the whole thing. So it is a personal loss for me to see this happen to her. Tokiko, it doesn't really matter. That's perfectly fine. I feel no concern about Tokiko dying. Proceed. Akio. <laughs> okay, having Akio and Akio and I just realized it's going to throw me off. Akio, Mrs. Otori, mm, Biko and Kane sleep in shifts. Do they? So we have the, uh, what, we have three people's a thruple. Is there a quadruple? Is that a thing? We've got the quadruple here. I don't know how Biko fits into this situation, but we've got three entangled characters uh, sleeping in shifts, helping each other out. Akio and Kane are on the same team. Mrs. Otori lost Tokiko, and I don't know what Biko and Eiko are doing. They seem to be on completely different pages. Biko is going for blood. Eiko is going for pacifism. They haven't seemed to talk at all. I don't know if it's like a grand scheme that they're making it seem like they split up, only to actually still be working on each other's side, like some kind of big brother or survivor reality TV show master plot. We'll see if it pans out. I don't know if those kind of tricks usually work. It, it could pay off, but it could also lead to them getting picked off separately when they could be stronger together. Raises a lot of questions. Choo Choo climbs a tree to rest. Choo Choo so far has been the most in character so far. Leaving to go stuff his face full of food when everyone else is fighting, getting a random leaf and water from a from a fan, and now he's just going into a tree to sleep. Uh, Choo Choo's, Choo Choo's staying here in character, and I, I do appreciate that. Mickey questions his sanity. Ha ha, I, I figured this could happen. Thank you, game, for recognizing the obvious peril that Mickey is in right now. Uh... Who's he going to play piano with? He lost both his sister and Anthony in one go. He he is going to be so far stuck into his own bird cage of his mind that this is this is a very perilous situation for our our dear dear boy here. Ruka and Aiko run into each other and decide to truce for the night. Again, Aiko coming on with the positive positivity pacifism vibes that she does not seem to want to fight. Ruka has been known to kill, though, so she is lucky. Or maybe she was able to charm Ruka. Maybe Ruka, being a true prince, you know, saw that Aiko meant him no harm and he would not dare hurt a woman who means no harm. If the woman means harm, though, he will freaking betray her and throw her into the river. But because she was truly a good soul, maybe he did not do any fighting. Maybe he relented. Nanami attempts to start a fire, but is unsuccessful. I can picture that as well. I, I think I just could just see, I could just see Nanami sitting in this like cave and it's like dripping wet. And she's just like super soaked to the bone, sad, and just like hungry and just sitting here trying to rub two sticks together, but being unable to. And normally this is something I think she would ask her posse to do, but even Keiko, who could have been possibly an ally with her, uh, Keiko is already dead, so she can't order anyone else around to make the fire. Tatsuya, the Onion Prince, Shiori and Mamiya cheerfully sing songs together. Okay, well, we do have Anthe continuing in a sense through Mamiya, so there is a sense in which she lives on through this character. She's not totally out in that sense. And it seems like, although earlier Mamiya was asking to be killed and Anthe obviously did lose or die, uh, Mamiya seems to be doing better, able to sing. And that's also good for Shiori, unless I'm almost wondering if Shiori's singing isn't necessarily cheerful. It's kind of just a deranged at this point, just a little bit like doing anything to distract herself from the overwhelming grief. Um, this this whole thing's gonna be full of dark humor, guys. We we have to we have to accept what's going on because this is too serious. If we dwell on it, just like Shiori, if we dwell on it, it's it's gonna get to us. So we just need to laugh it off, guys. That's for the best. Mitsuru destroys angry conservative teacher's supplies while she is asleep. You know, I'm wondering after Mitsuru took his first kill, if he's still so stunned by it, he's, he's going to resort to non-violent methods right now, if he can, if he can avoid a direct confrontation. And he seems to have an eye for the supplies angle. He's already managed to grab a backpack for himself. And I don't know what he's able to get from the angry conservative teacher. Maybe he got the ruler, the most powerful attack stat weapon in this competition. I do worry, though, if angry conservative teacher is able to figure out, like, if she wakes up and she sees footprints in the mud and they're the small footprints of an elementary school kid, she could seek revenge. She, you got to be watching out for her. She has been known to be very dangerous. Let's proceed. Ruka and Choo Choo work together for the day. Now, that's a, that's a relationship I wasn't expecting. I suppose without Anthe and Utsuna there, Choo Choo would need to find someone else for support. 
And I suppose Ruka embodies a lot of those prince-like qualities that maybe Choo Choo could be drawn to. Um, and if you think of Ruka as maybe being a bad person, you can also say maybe it's Choo Choo being drawn to the Akio-like traits in him. So whatever interpretation you have of Ruka, maybe Choo Choo is drawn to that charisma either way. Although I do wonder, does Choo Choo even recognize that Anthony and Uthida are gone? Does Choo Choo care? Does Choo Choo show remorse, sadness? I, I don't know what that little rodent Endor primate really really has going on in the noggin other than maybe some beans rattling around. Tetsuya the Onion Prince shoots an arrow into Kanae's head. Well, it doesn't say, it doesn't say that she died, right? She could have just took an, like it says into her head. Maybe he shot it and it hit through her cheek and it's just, you know, she got an arrow through her cheek, but she's fine. It doesn't mean she's dead, right? People have survived things before. And, you know, I'm sure in the Hunger Games they have, even though I've only read the first book and seen the first movie, I'm sure that there's been things just as bad that people have made it through. So until I see or hear the cannon go off and say Kane is dead, I'm, I'm holding hope that she's just got an arrow embedded somewhere and it's all good, you know? It's that it's like that guy from, like, the early 1900s with the, like, railroad spike through his head and he was fine afterward. Nothing happened. That's what's going to be... That's what's going to be going on with Kana here. Also surprised Tatsuya managed to get this happening. I'm wondering if maybe like, yeah, he's, he's got that higher ground. He was able to get an arrow and just kind of catch Kana off guard because Kana is a melee fighter with that mace. So maybe he took advantage of that distance. People people always underestimate bows and arrows. You know, they're always underestimating the potential of those in a combat situation. But pretty useful. Pretty useful. Angry conservative teacher overhears Nanami and Biko talking in the distance. Oh, Miss Nanami and Biko. Oh. Mrs. Otori and Akio split up to search for resources. <laughs> if you know what I mean. I don't know what I mean. Uh, Eiko overhears Shiori and Mamiya talking at the distance. A lot, of, a lot of gossip, a lot of rumors. This is the episode of the reality show. We're focusing a lot on the relationships. Potential double crossing here. Mickey chases Mitsuru. Again, does not say killed. It could be a friendly chase. Um, Mickey, Mickey, I imagine by this point is like ripped off his clothing and is in a loincloth just in the woods, right? Going fully into character of someone who is ready to just rip people apart, uh, after questioning his own sand of the night. So I think Mitsuru is probably just, you know, trying to avoid Mickey who is chasing him madly through the forest. And it seems like Mitsuru was able to escape another day with his life. And the more animal Mickey goes, maybe the more Mitsuru is able to handle it, because Mitsuru does have a, a bit of a specialty with animals. So it, it's possible that was to his advantage here. Proceed. One cannon shot can be heard in the distance. Kane. Can't imagine what killed Kane. Uh, it seemed to me like she had a real fighting chance. Hmm. Guess we'll never know. And if we're looking at, so far, the kill count... You know, most of these people haven't done a lot of killing. Uh, Mitsuru killed one person. I think he's still feeling the, the ramifications of that in his soul. Ruka got six kills. Uh, I think weren't three or four of them in one, one explosion of a bomb. So Ruka is so far the most dangerous man alive, although he has been known to collaborate with Choo Choo and to form truces with someone. So he, he seems to be a really unpredictable character. Tetsuya has done a kill. He managed to use that arrow to, I guess, kill Kane somehow. How we'll never know. And Mrs. Otori, no kills yet so far. She hasn't really done anything in this game, which is so unlike her in the anime, you know, being a key power player in the anime and the manga and the movie, of course. Of course. If we're looking at this, you know, Akio seemingly is a nice guy, I guess, by this. Nanami hasn't had any cats to drown recently either. So we're looking at all these. I'm, I'm trying to speculate here. If I were going in character, Mickey, I think, has the, the killer instinct at this moment, but I, I'm questioning if he has his smarts with him. Mickey's strongest attribute usually is his cunning and intelligence. Cunning is probably a strong word for it. He's bookish. He's smart. And I'm like, maybe Mickey, if he had his full repertoire of intellectual components at his disposal, maybe. Just maybe, if he got his senses and sensibility in order, he could win this. But I'm thinking in his current state, it's less likely. Shiori hasn't killed as many people as I would have expected so far. And I, and I don't know, again, the effect of Jury's passing, what it has on Shiori. If Shiori maybe has lost the, the drive to really go for it anymore. We'll have to see if she finds that spark coming up soon. Choo Choo could survive as one of those people in a in a reality show who just kind of coasts along until the end and then they everyone likes them on the, the, the council so they just decide to like let them win over the person who backstabbed everyone because if it was Choo Choo versus Ruka at the end and everyone voted 
Uh, I assume they would give it to Choo Choo because Ruka's killed almost everyone's friend. That being said, this is the Hunger Games. This isn't a voting council. I don't know why I'm even talking about that. So I'm, I'm thinking that maybe Choo Choo, the only way he's going to survive this whole thing is if he somehow lucks his way into the end and the other person just like falls on a landmine. Or Choo Choo, through just sheer accidental methods, manages to kill the last person at the end. Or, or he gets a final three and two other people kill each other. We'll have to see. I, this, I, I'm kind of surprised to say it, but I would give Mitsuru the edge over Nanami at this point. Mitsuru seems a lot more resourceful and a lot more effective than what Nanami's pulling here. And then Ruka, like Ruka's the obvious choice to win because he got so many kills, but that's got to come back for him, right? That's got to haunt him one of these days. He's made too many people upset that I feel like he he might have his days numbered. Anger conservative teacher, I, I think she's strong in the early game. I just don't know if she has it in her. And I'm really uncertain about Aiko and Biko. I think if I had to pick a winner... Out of everyone so far, I I um I think Choo Choo would be fun, but I think my answer for the winner is going to probably be Aiko. I think Aiko is going to make it just by not upsetting enough people, by by staying out of the conflicts. I think that she's going to manage to pull to the end. And I think she's still got something with Biko. I think they're still close. I don't see them killing each other. So I think that she has at least one ally still in the game. And she's managed to get Ruka to truce. That, that has to say something about her diplomacy skills. And everyone knows diplomacy, very important in the Hunger Games. I've only read one book and watched one movie. Mamiya receives medical supplies from an unknown sponsor. Really, really scary curious on that one because Mamiya doesn't show his face in the light of day very much in the show. He only has like one connection and that connection is gone in the Hunger Games. So that really is a truly unknown sponsor. It could be like a Mamiya fan, you know, at home who's watching this and is or or a Nemero fan who's pulling from Mamiya now out of the shadows. Possible. Mitsuru receives fresh fruit from an uh, fresh fruit, fresh food from an unknown sponsor. Tetsu the Onion Prince receives fresh food from an unknown food from an unknown sponsor. Akia receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. Um, I'm going to say this is probably Giovanna of Empty Movement. I, I feel like there's some mixed feelings on Akio in the fan base. And even though toxic, super bad person, look, some people got to gotta support him, you know? Ruka stabs Biko in the back with a trident. Does not say killed. Now, how corporeal is Biko? Is, is, he, is he stabbing the shadow? Or is he stabbing someone in front of a projector? Because I imagine, like, Ruka is, you know, this fully, fully physical, in-color character. Stabbing a shadow ain't going to do anything. You can't kill Peter Pan by strangling Peter Pan's shadow. I've tried. You can't do it. Or maybe Ruka also went from the projector. He became a shadow. And then his shadow self stabbed Biko with a shadow trident. That might actually have done it. We'll have to see when the cannons fire. Because again, stabbing with a trident, it could be through the heart, it could be through the lungs, but it could also be he stabbed her pinky toe. You don't know. Don't assume things. Could have stabbed her through the pigtails. That's stabbing someone if you stab them through the pigtails. Contrary to popular belief, that still counts. Shiori and Choo Choo huddle for warmth. So again, Choo Choo playing in character. I don't know why Choo Choo go to Shiori of all people, but I, I suppose at this time, beggars can't be choosers. Nanami loses sight of where she is. Oh, girl. <laughs> Nanami. Why? <laughs> I, I love you, Nanami, but I, I don't know if you have much of a fighting chance right now. Mickey sets off an explosive killing Aiko. No. Okay, so maybe, maybe I'm underestimating Mickey here. Maybe he does, or maybe he just started to get back to his senses. I don't know. That's really upsetting, though. That was my pick. Okay, Aiko is now out of the running. I guess I have to transfer my support to Mickey. That's how this works. When when the person you are most supportive of ends up losing, you have to switch to the person who killed them. Mrs. Otori sets up camp for the night. Angry conservative teacher stays awake all night. Okay, is that by choice? Is she, you know, being alert to make sure no one gets her at night and she being on guard? Uh, that's a risky strategy because obviously it's going to make her really tired the next day, but maybe she has a reason to be suspicious that someone else is going to get her. Maybe she heard Mrs. Otori setting a camp nearby and angry conservative teacher is on guard. Or is it that she can't sleep? She's too restless. She has killed two people. She is potentially missing her supplies that were stolen by Mitsuru. I think it was Mitsuru. So maybe... This is on purpose, maybe it's not. Either way, it's looking to hurt her the next day where she may be a bit tired. Mitsuru fishes, again, that animal affiliation coming in, getting some food. I don't know if anyone else is getting food unless it's in their supplies. So Mitsuru having the strength of body and will. 
Angry conservative teacher travels to the higher ground. She seems to be very on, our, on alert. Now, is it, is it paranoia or is there a legitimate reason to be worried? Other than the fact that people are trying to kill you, does she have a specific reason to be afraid for herself? Mickey searches for a water source. Mia picks flowers. Remarkably in character. Ruka is pricked by thorns while picking berries. Okay, are these poisonous thorns? Or are these safe thorns? It'd be kind of interesting after all the killing that Ruka's done. He'd get defeated by some berries. Or the thorns on the berries. You know what I mean. Tetsuya the Onion Prince makes a wooden spear. Ooh. Is it another long-ranged attempt? Like he's going to throw the spear? Or is this a, a melee weapon as well? Either way, keeping, keeping some range in, in mind for his fights. Akio decapitates Choo Choo with a sword. Mrs. Otori receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Shiori is pricked by thorns while picking berries. Again, are they poisonous? Nanami is pricked by thorns while picking berries. Are they all picking them from the same, like, vine? I'm imagining, like, this comical situation in which, like, Ruka comes up to some berries. And, like, mmm, berries. And then, like, picks them and then gets pricked. He walks away. And then, like, we just kind of linger on the, on the shot of no one around. And then all of a sudden, Shiori comes in. Ooh, berries. And then she just picks them, gets hurt immediately. And then Nanami, comically, comes over. Mmm, moo, berries. And then picks them up, eats them. Uh, and they're just one after the other, rapid succession from the exact same vineyard, orchard, plant, etc. Three shots can be heard in the distance. Biko. Okay, we knew Biko had been killed. Aiko. Yes, because one of them was stabbed by a trident from Ruka. So that's like the seventh kill from Ruka. And then Aiko. Struggling to remember how Aiko died. And then Choo Choo. Oh yeah, Chuchu got decapitated. So yeah, that makes sense. So the berries are the berries are okay for right now, unless those the 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 wound is going to poison and fester later. It seems like they're okay right now. Tetsuya the Onion Prince receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Ruka is unable to start a fire and sleeps without warmth. Mamiya stays awake all night. Angry conservative teacher loses sight of where she is, and now I'm seeing four people below: Mitsuru and Nanami. They're together. Mrs. Otori and Mickey. We don't have any affiliations for them. Mrs. Otori hasn't really done much in this game so far. Mickey has been a murderous creature of the woods ever since losing Kozue. And Nanami has wandered aimlessly. And the question is, will Mamiya assist her? Or will Mamiya refuse to assist her after all he's been through? What, what's, what state is their relationship in? Mitsuru, Nanami, Mrs. Otori, and Mickey sleep in shifts. Oh, so like an unlikely alliance here. Uh, I, I don't know beyond the, the hair color what Mickey and Mrs. Otori are, are kind of having in common, but there is a weird truce going on that Mickey is either you know, going to betray them or maybe he's having a moment where uh, he sees some gain to be had in working together for this moment. Uh, I'm, I'm understanding Mitsuru and Nanami. Those are the two that I'm kind of suspicious about. Akio receives clean water from an unknown sponsor. Didn't he just get water? You're really making this man hydrated. You're making sure he's he's a he's a not thirsty. Shiori is woken by nightmares. Oh no! Shiori kills Nanami while she is resting. Thus ends the reign of our queen. And Shiori has actually done something so far. So I guess good for Shiori. Sad for the rest of us Nanami fans. Mickey camouflages himself in the bushes. That seems about right. Akio Mamiya. Angry conservative teacher and Ruka raid Mitsuru's camp while he's hunting. Yeah, I'm sure by this point, rumors have come around about this weird little kid who just goes through people's stuff at night and takes their backpacks and takes their items. And it's about time this this uh, group get the comeuppance. Even though these were not all the people who got their supplies taken, angry conservative teacher was. So I wonder if maybe she rallied, ral rallied? rallied the forces to make sure that she uh, received some help. And of course, being the good princes that they are, Ruka and Akio would have to help the woman in need. And Mamiya, I don't know what Mamiya has to gain from all of this, but maybe some more supplies, which might be lacking at the moment. Tetsui the Onion Prince tends to Mrs. Otori's wounds. Wow. Again, unlikely alliance for Mrs. Otori. Maybe she's using her skills of persuasion to make sure that everyone does her bidding. Uh, or she just says she's going to tell their moms because she is actually in charge. She has a high position in the school, right? I know that Akio is the chairman, but she... She's important, right? Either way, 
this is interesting. I, I have no doubt that Tetsuya could help Tencent Woods. He feels like a very medical kind of guy. Like, if I was putting him on a team, like a squad, I'd put him as, like, the medic, for sure. Tetsuya the Onion Prince dips his weapon in the lava. There's lava? When in the Hunger Games is there lava? Is there a volcano on Hunger Island? Is that a thing? And when I say his weapon, I'm going to assume it's the spear, not the arrows. He probably dips the spear he got in the lava. Anyway, he killed Mamiya with it. So Anthe and Mamiya are both gone. No way of that magic interfering with anything any further. That's, I think, Tetsuya's second kill. Very much biding his time to make sure he kills indiscriminately, maybe isolating key figures along the way. Akio dips his weapon in lava and kills Ruka with it. I don't know if we ever heard of Akio having a weapon. So I'm just going to assume that Akio, his weapon are his hands. So he just dove his hands into lava. And as his hands were smoldering with lava, he like grabbed Ruka with his lava hands. Maybe he did something cool. Maybe he like used his lava hand and like drove it into Ruka's heart. Just like seared through his chest flesh and grabbed the heart and ripped it out like fatality style. As they're both like screaming in agony because, you know, Akio's hands are full of lava right now. And maybe, although he sacrificed his hand in the process, he was finally able to take down Ruka, who had like seven kills. So, again, I was wondering if someone was going to, you know, finally take down Ruka. And it took another prince, another prince-like figure, Akio, to make it happen. Angry conservative teacher survives. Same. You know, sometimes all you can do is survive. And, uh, you know, mad respect to angry conservative teacher for making it through another day. Y you got this. Mickey is buried in ash. I'm assuming a volcano exploded at some point. When you're buried in ashes, it's like you're suffocated, uh, ice ages upon you, Pompeii devastation ash. Or is this just like, you know, a little bit? Buried would suggest it's a lot, but can he dig himself out of the ash? Or has Mickey been suffocated in ash? Only time will tell. Mrs. Otori survives. Shiori survives. Mitsuru survives. Is there like a description? Oh, it even th it says at the top of volcano erupts. Have there always been? Have there always been words here before? Oops. Anyway, so moving forward here, proceed. Nanami was killed. Mamiya was killed. Ruka was killed. And yeah, Mickey was buried with the ash. Let's go ahead and see everyone's status right now. So still in the game, we got Shiori with one kill. Mitsuru with one kill. Tatsuya with his second kill now. Mrs. Otori and the Angry Conservative Teacher, they are both still alive. They barely work together. I don't even know if they're close, but their district is still together. And then we've got Akio. So this is the final one, two, three, four, five, six. Final six. Hmm. Akio and Angry Conservative Teacher hold hands. I admit, while Akio... Is a, is a womanizer and also is constantly throwing himself around. I, I didn't think he would try to work the charms on her. And we have seen her reciprocate or at least show some interest in that. Uh, was he was he a principal or other teacher during the situation where Jory and Utsuna were talking at the school, like in, in like episode like four or five or something. Uh, she seemed interested in having that private one-on-one -on -one dinner with that guy. So, you know, maybe she has been looking for someone, you know, she's, she's out there just surviving. It'd, it'd be helpful to have, you know, a strong man like Akio to there to support her. And uh, maybe that's what she's doing here. Maybe this is a, a power play for Akio to woo her over. I, I don't think Akio is genuinely in love with her. I think it, it's more of a power play by him, but would the teacher also be using it as a power play or is she smitten? In other words, what I'm trying to get it is maybe Akio is using her. Mitsuru thinks about home. Is home Otori Academy? Or is home wherever Mitsuru's come from? It, where, where, does, where is that? Is it in Japan? Is it in somewhere else? He's got blonde hair. But then again, what does that mean? Because other characters have like blue hair, right? I don't know if that means anything. Toga's a redhead. I don't think that means he's got like Irish family or something. Tatsu the Onion Prince receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Dude, this guy's got fans. I guess it's not only Wakaba who was a fan of Tatsuya for a while. Shiori defeats Mrs. Otori in a fight, but spares her life. Again, Mrs. Otori, with her powers of persuasion, it seems like no one wants to lay a finger on her. And I don't know what, she like threatening to expel them? Is, does she have some, some really strong persuasive arguments? I'm not sure. I don't think Shiori is holding back. She has killed someone already. She killed Nanami. The cornucopia is replenished with food, supplies, weapons, and memoirs of the tribute's families. Tetsuya, the Onion Prince, decides not to go to the feast. Maybe he thinks that this is a trap or he could see it 
possibly backfiring. Even though there are supplies and weapons there, he's already got quite a bit, maybe. He feels like he's already fine with his, with his spear and with his bow. Shiori gathers as much food into a bag as she can before fleeing. Same. Angry conservative teacher decides not to go to the feast. Akio dies from an infection. Was that the berries? Did he did he get buried? Not in ash, but in, in, in berries? Either way, huge upset for one of the main characters that was finally left over. I think we're down to five now. Mitsuru decides not to go to the feast. Again, resourceful, very intelligent. Mrs. Otori stuffs a bundle of dry clothing into a backpack before sprinting away. Angry conservative teacher searches for firewood. Mitsuru makes a wooden spear. Shiori questions her sanity. Mrs. Otori goes hunting. Tetsu the Onion Prince receives an explosive from an unknown sponsor. Only one death, and it was Akio. So this is final five, right? Shiori, Mitsuru, Tetsuya, Mrs. Otori, and the angry conservative teacher. So who do you think is going to come out on top? Let's survey the situation. Shiori has mostly played a quiet game. She's been questioning her sanity on the sly. I think she's maybe lost some of her drive due to jury's early loss. I think it was day one or two. So I don't know if she's had the will to, to really make the power moves, but as a result of it, I feel like she's generally gone unnoticed. And when she killed Nanami, I wouldn't be surprised if Nanami was provoking her. Nanami, who had been hungry, unable to start a fire, had been kind of like losing sleep, it seems. I, I get this picture that Nanami, who's already really like irritable and short-tempered, was probably even further like that. And sees Shiori, tries to boss Shiori around, and Shiori, in a, in a heat of rage, takes Nanami down. But does that mean that Shiori's got the instinct instinct to further kill and further win the Hunger Games situation remains to be seen. Mitsuru and Tatsuya both playing very conservative, um, carefully planned out games with Mitsuru seeming to hoard a lot of supplies and, and being good at uh, getting those. Although he did get raided that one time. And then uh, Tatsuya um, with his spear and uh, bow combo has taken out a couple people and has been resourceful to use that magma in a way that doesn't involve his hands being melted off like Akio clearly did. Mrs. Otori uh, seems to be unable to be killed because anytime she's around people, she's able to truce with them or able to get them to spare her for no perceivable reason. An angry conservative teacher, I think she's going strong, except that Akio may have won her heart. So if I were a betting person, if I were betting on this, I would say either Mitsuru or Tatsuya. They seem the strongest candidates right now. And between the two of them, I think Tatsuya has got more composure. I'm, I'm reading a lot into the pictures. Mitsuru, I, I don't believe, has fully gotten over that first kill early on. Whereas I think Tatsuya at this point has normalized and has kind of um, managed to understand his situation and, and not dwell on the guilt or the, the potential trauma at hand. I almost wonder if Mitsuru and Tatsuya both benefit from knowing their place as like average kind of normal people. They're not like these gifted elite duelists. Maybe that in a way has helped them because they're more resourceful as a result. They kind of know they're the underdogs and they don't have any ego or preconceived notions. So maybe it's actually giving them sort of a level headedness that's keeping them in the game. And same for Mrs. Otori and the conservative teacher. They're also just kind of like, you know, ordinary adults in the situation. So it seems to be a, a kind of a commonality here between some of our survivors. Oh, wow. So all five of them just agree to sleep in shifts, which is really interesting because they have to know by this point, based on the number of cannon fires, that they're the only ones left. And yet they're still willing to all be near each other. You would think you'd want to keep your distance. But I suppose if, you know, four of the five of them have already allied in this way, you don't want to be the fifth one not sleeping with them because then they're going to be thinking that you're going to betray them or that you're a threat. So I suppose after, you know, enough of them start agreeing to do this, you know, you, you just got to follow suit. I would imagine the first one to suggest this is probably Mrs. Otori. And then maybe Shiori meekly agreed. The teacher thought, okay, I can trust, I can trust my fellow district partner of Mrs. Otori. And then the two boys also felt pressured at that moment to jump in. Mitsuru discovers a river. Angry conservative teacher attacks Shiori, but she manages to escape. I imagine Akio uh, would have wanted her to go after Shiori, would have wanted her to live on. And maybe the conservative teacher, even though her heart had been smitten by Akio, now that Akio has bitten the dust, or, or bitten the berries, per se, that she is going to live on and fight for him. Uh, but anyway, Shiori resourceful managed to escape. Mrs. Otori runs away from Tatsuya. No cannon shots heard. Angry conservative teacher goes to sleep. Shiori thinks about winning. That doesn't get you very far, Shiori. You gotta actually do it. You know, you gotta, you gotta, you know, fight for it. 
Tatsuya the Onion Prince loses sight of where he is. Mitsuru cries himself to sleep. Oh. Mrs. Otori dies of dysentery. Proceed. Shiori hunts for other tributes. Angry conservative teacher constructs a shack. That's really resourceful compared to everyone else who's struggling to build a fire. Good job building an entire shack. Tatsuya the Onion Prince discovers a cave. I mean, who needs a shack when you already have a cave? Mitsuru hunts for the tributes. So you got Mitsuru and Shiori on the aggressive hunt, and you've got Anger Kitsuru Teacher and Tetsuya looking for shelter. We're currently on night seven. Mitsuru sets up camp for the night. Shiori falls into a pit and dies. I guess on her hunt, it got a little too dark, and she just lost sight of her footing and fell. I feel like Shiori's had the saddest story in all of this. It is a lot of sadness in this Hunger Games. But but Shiori had like one kill of Nanami and then ever since has been kind of just wandering around and then falling into a pit. Angry conservative teacher and Tatsuya hold hands. Okay, teacher, you gotta stop this. It was bad enough with Akio, but Tatsuya... I don't need to tell you why that's a problem, do I? Let's proceed. Mitsuru practices his archery, probably to keep up with, uh, he knows maybe the bigger threat is Tatsuya at this point, so he needs to hone his skills. Tatsuya throws a knife into Eger conservative teacher's head. That's probably self-defense because the teacher was trying to hold your hand and that's very uncomfortable, so maybe he got to the knife route. <laughs> and, um, I, uh, I, I doesn't say she's dead, but I'm going to assume based on prior experiences that this probably means a cannonball fire. The arena turns pitch black and nobody can see a thing. Tetsuya the Onion Prince flails his weapon around, accidentally killing Mitsuru. Is that the win? Is that the is that the final is that the final kill? I'm just really confused how it's an accident because wouldn't these two want to kill each other if they're the last two? How do you accident I mean unless they're like fighting and Tetsuya is like flailing his spear around, which is not how you use a spear, and he doesn't even intend for that to be the killing shot. And he just did it? But, like, why Why was he... I don't understand. What's happening? Proceed. Three cannon shots. Shiori, Anchor Conservative Teacher, Mitsuru. Proceed. The winner is Tatsuya the Onion Prince from District 7. So if you predicted Tatsuya as the winner, congratulations. What kind of revolution is Tatsuya going to want to bring? He's, like, the hardest one for me to predict, or at least one of the hardest ones. Um, I suppose... If he's, you know, if he, maybe if he's pure at heart, his revolution is to bring everyone back who died. You know, very much a, a Madoka Magica type of wish, you know, that he would, he would bring everyone back. Or maybe at this point, Tatsuya just wants a nice bowl of ramen. You know, maybe he just wants a nice hearty meal after all of his survival. Wow. I don't know. Let's proceed. So it gives the whole placements here. I'm not going to read over everything. You can go ahead and pause and, and look at these uh, stats if you're interested in that. Um, just kind of some, some highlights here. Tetsuya did win with four kills. So a decent amount. Not the highest, but definitely not a small kill count either. Mrs. Otori got really far despite having no kills. Ruka has the most kills with seven. Yeah, and then the bottom row, no kills because they died so early. So if we're looking at the order of kills, it was Keiko died first, then Nemuro, then Toga, then Sayonji, then Anthe, then Utsuna, then Kozue, then Juri, then Wakaba. I think these were all like day one. Tokiko might have also been day one. I can't remember. Who cares? Kanae, Biko, Eiko, Chuchu, Nanami, Mamiya, Ruka, Miki, Akio, Mrs. Otori, Shiori, Angry Conservative Teacher, Mitsuru, and then Tatsuya at the end. Oh, it gives us a summary of all the different days. Again, I'm not going to read over all of this, but I will scroll through in case you wanted to read any of these things. Good string there of no deaths occurring with day five and six. So that has been the Utsuna Hunger Games, revolutionary Hunger Games, if you will. I didn't know what to expect, and I will say that day one took me for an entire loop. And ever since then, we had this very strange story of the rise of, I guess, Mitsuru and ultimately Tatsuya over all the competition. There was love, there was loss, there was madness, there was treachery, all the things you might expect out of this sort of endeavor, and yet still so full of surprises. This was very different content than what I normally make. Uh, if you are new to the channel, hi! Um, normally, I do video essay type content and also do a podcast. 
We do have three other Utena videos on this channel if you're interested, and you can check those out in the playlists on our channel. One of them is on the overall uh, background of the show. One is on Mickey Kaoru specifically in both the anime, but all the other materials. And then one is on what if Wakaba won the Black Rose duels and ultimately killed Anthe. Then on my side channel, Khalil Ranks, which I have left currently dormant. I don't know if I'm going to go back to that. That is a few ranking videos uh, of favorite characters, favorite episodes, and I think a controversial one on ships that's also still up there that I thought about taking down, but I've left up for at least right now. If this sort of thing interests you, if you want me to do another one, I know that there are other things you can do here. There's like a survivor version of this where it gets more elaborate. I could set up like allies and enemies and relationships and do that sort of thing. If that is interesting to you, uh, let me know in the comments. If it's not interesting to you, let me know in the comments. I like engagement. I'd be curious. I almost thought of putting this on that side channel, but I figured it's 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 some Utena content that maybe people on our main channel might be interested in, regardless of how weird it is and how, uh, how experimental this is. This has been semi-off-the-cuff, unscripted. Uh, Khalil here, wishing you a lovely day. Stay safe, everyone. Make sure to guard your supplies at the campfire very thoroughly. Ciao.